Chaga Mushroom, the king of mushrooms, uh, in a lot of ways made famous by Solzhenitsyn's book, The Cancer Ward, is a pretty high source of oxalates. Is that a problem? Should you be worried about it? Well, let's get into it. Let's look at the real details and see if this is a, a cause for concern and, and whether you should be completely avoiding chaga, perhaps. Before we get into it, go down in the comments. I'm curious to know where you're watching from and if chaga is something that you consume regularly, let me know. And while you're down there, leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. We love sharing these educational videos with you and having you along for this adventure with us. So oxalates are responsible for 80% of kidney stones and chaga is a pretty high source of them. Now, not all oxalate foods lead to kidney stones and definitely not in all people. You have two kinds of oxalates overall. You have soluble oxalates and you have insoluble oxalates. The insoluble kind, these are already bound to minerals, so they're not gonna be absorbed. They, they've already got their pair, they're not gonna interact with you very much. On the other hand, you have soluble oxalates, and these are ready and willing to bind up with calcium and make calcium oxalate crystals that in certain people can be problematic. Now, let's say you wanted to have some mushrooms that didn't have any oxalates in them at all. I got good news for you. Two of our favorite mushrooms, lion's mane mushroom and reishi mushroom, have no oxalates. So if you are a kidney stone former, this is a, a fairly small percentage of the population, but if you are a, a genetic kidney stone former, if a lot of people in your families make kidney stones and you feel the need to play it safe there, go for lion's mane and reishi mushroom. No oxalates there. But Let's take a deeper look. Why do oxalates come up? Why do foods produce oxalates and, and why sometimes more and sometimes less? Uh, there is a small amount of research that indicates that oxalates are produced in response to environmental heavy metal toxicity. So it is possible that a chaga grown in a more pure environment would have a lower amount say of oxalates than one grown in a less pure environment. So that's a factor to consider. Now. How does chaga compare in its levels of oxalates to some other things out there? Well, by weight, it's pretty similar to things like almonds or peanuts or many grains, and it's much lower in oxalates than say spinach or rhubarb or beet greens. Now, the important factor to keep in mind here is serving size. Now, when you're looking at a serving size of like almonds or peanuts or, or wheat, um, Never mind, like spinach and, and, and beet greens. This is orders of magnitude larger in terms of the serving size. I mean, nobody sits down and just eats two almonds, right? You're looking at at least a handful, right? So when we compare the amount by weight of oxalates that are in there, it's not a fair comparison because the serving size of chaga is infinitesimally small compared to some of these other things. So what does this mean numbers wise? If we compare half a cup of spinach, that's a pretty small serving of spinach, right? That's like, you know, gonna easily fit into your palm. If we take half a cup of spinach, that has an equivalent amount of oxalates to 50 servings of chaga. So for this reason, I think that overall, it's an absolute non-issue. If you are a kidney stone former, okay, you probably don't wanna be having four to five cups a day of chaga. Um, but the fact is that for the general population, the massive health benefits of chaga drastically outweigh the tiny amount of oxalates that you're gonna be having in there. Another interesting factor is to look at this from the direction of the gut microbiome. The gut microbiome, it's so important, it always plays into just about everything, right? You can't avoid it. You can't have an unhealthy gut microbiome and be healthy. It doesn't work out that way. It's such a foundational building block of health. Now, a healthy microbiome has a bacteria in it called Oxalobacter formingenes. And this is a bacteria that breaks down oxalates and helps prevent kidney stones. Problem is, this bacteria is very easily wiped out by antibiotics. Now, I haven't seen any probiotic products that contain Oxalobacter formingenes. Uh, it would be very cool if a company offered those in future, uh, 
because this is something that everybody could benefit from having in their system. But we'll see what happens down the line with that. Uh, who knows, maybe 10 years from now, there will be an addictive wellness oxalobacter fermentionese uh, probiotic product. We'll see, you never know. Um, but it's not coming in the near future from us. I can definitely tell you that, but maybe some other company will, will jump on the bandwagon. All right, so I'm curious to know in the comments, um, do you drink chaga regularly? And do you have somebody in your family who is a kidney stone former? Uh, and what are the reasons why you drink chaga? I'm curious to know more about your relationship with this, with this amazing, amazing mushroom. Thank you guys again for joining me. Uh, and, and you know what, while you're down there, do me a favor. Uh, leave a like on the video and, and subscribe to our channel. It really does help to support us and it doesn't cost you anything. And if you wanna take a step further in supporting us as well and have a really good time, check out our website, addictivewellness.com. I'd love for you to experience our sugar-free raw chocolates enhanced with adaptogenic super herbs. We have those same super herbs as individual extracts so you can get alchemical with them as well. And then we also have mycotoxin-free cacao powder or elixir blends for making delicious hot or cold um, herbal drinks. And I would just love to be able to share all this stuff with you guys and hear what your experience is with it. Thanks again for joining us today, guys. Really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you again next time. Mm -hmm.